Exodus 15 and 26. He said, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and do that which is right in His sight, will give ear to His commandments and keep all His statutes, I'll put none of the diseases upon you which I've brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Hallelujah. I am the Lord that heals you. If you look this up in the original language dictionaries, this I am the Lord that heals you, you'll find it's one of the great compound redemptive names. Jehovah Rapha. The Lord has revealed himself through his names. He's revealed himself Jehovah Shama, the Lord who is present, the Lord who is there. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord your peace. Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord your righteousness. Jehovah Raya, Raya, the Lord your shepherd. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord your provider. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord your victory. Yes. How many believe he is still the Lord your peace? Yes. And always will be the Lord your shepherd. Yes. The Lord your righteousness. Yes. The Lord who is always there. Yes. Well, is he still the Lord your healer? Yes. Will he always be the Lord yes. your healer? Nobody has a right to take the great I am and say he was. He used to be. No, no. I am the Lord that heals you. Let me read another couple of translations. Young's literal says, I, Jehovah, am healing thee. The complete English version says, I am the Lord, your God, and I cure your diseases. C-E-V, that was. The message says, I am God, your healer. Some, instead of healer, say physician. The one who mends you. You could say it like this. I'm the one who fixes you. Yeah. That'd be accurate. I'm the, I'm the God who fixes you. Oh, somebody needs to get excited about that. So, so tell him, say, you are the God who fixes me. Of what? Whatever, whatever needs fixing. Right? I don't have to go around unfixed. I don't have to go around broken, impaired. Hmm? Because he is the God who fixes me. He is the God who fixes me. I'm, I'm the Lord, the one who heals you, your physician, your healer. Now, one thing we got into uh, last Sunday, I want us to look at again. In uh, uh, Jeremiah, you, you don't have to turn there, but they'll put these on the screen for us. Jeremiah 17, 14 says, heal me, O Lord. And I shall be healed. Save me and I shall be saved. For you are my praise. Heal me. And I'm healed. Save me. And I'm saved. Why would you say it like that? Because the two are connected. They're connected. The modern church has separated salvation from healing and they've done damage to the scriptures and obscured the truth the new birth and healing are directly connected hallelujah they are connected we're going to see that more and more as we go Psalm 103 we shouted about uh, last weekend Psalm 103.1 he said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. 
Bless the Lord, verse 2. Uh, oh, my soul, and forget not what? All, all, all his benefits. Now, now, why would the Lord say to us, don't forget all my benefits? Because uh, a lot of folks have, have narrowed down the benefits to one or two. They believe there is the benefit of being saved and not going to hell and going to heaven. But you get out much beyond that and go, oh, I now, it might not be God's will. And, and we don't, they, they don't believe in many benefits. But we do. Because the Bible says so. Forget not all his benefits. And then he starts listing the top benefits. Benefit number one. Who forgives? All. The, the, now, now he keeps emphasizing. Forget not all. All his benefits, he forgives all your iniquities and who heals all your diseases. Now, now we read this, we shout about it, but most folks don't believe it. Most church going people do not believe this verse. Say what? You heard me. They believe half of it. They believe the Lord it is his will to forgive all iniquities. But they don't believe it equally and as strongly that it is his will to heal all diseases. But it's the same verse. It's the same verse. Said out loud, he forgives. He now go ahead and apply it to yourself. Say, he forgives, he forgives. all my iniquities. And he heals all my diseases. All. All. If you say, well, you know, I, you know, people don't always get, get healed. Yeah, and people don't always receive forgiveness. But it doesn't change the fact that he is the forgiver of all iniquities. And he is the healer of all. Somebody say all. 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 Ah, all diseases. Oh, thank you, Lord. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Praise be to God. Go with me over to Luke, the fifth chapter, and get ready. <coughs> get ready for what, Brother Keith? Get ready to get free. Get ready. Yes. I may preach, you may shout. Yes. Be warned, be ready. Bring it on. Hallelujah. Woo. Tell me what the truth will do for you. The truth make me free. will absolutely make you free. 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 So many times you. You don't realize how bound you've been until you get the truth. Hmm? How much you've been robbed and how much you've been hindered and held back and held up. And then the truth dawns on you and you go, Hi, whoa, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. No, I don't have to have this anymore. I don't have to live like this anymore. I don't have to put up with this anymore. It will make you free Whew. <coughs> Luke 5 verse 17 it came to pass on a certain day as he Jesus was teaching that there were Pharisees doctors of the law sitting by now we hear doctors of the law, but these are doctors of theology. These are preachers. These are uh, individuals who have done extensive study in the law of Moses, the law and the prophets. So they're experts, supposedly. 
in the scriptures. And the Pharisees were very strict, uh, you know, live by the law, do it right. And they were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. So we've got a mass of preachers at this meeting. They weren't just preachers out of Galilee, but also Judea, also Jerusalem, out of every town in these regions. I mean, you'd have thought this was a preacher convention. Bunch of PhDs, doctors of religion. And uh, the power of the Lord was Present. This is a, 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 a revelation manifestation of one of these compound names we were just talking about. Amen. Jehovah who is present. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. The power of the Lord was present, was there to heal them. Yeah. Them preachers. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Now that's not what they came for. But the power was there to do that for them. Isn't God merciful? A bunch of them were there to find fault. They were there to take notes. To find fault with what he's saying, with what he's doing. To get him him in trouble with the authorities. Try to hurt him, try to undermine him some way. Now you know, when you got a stinky attitude like that, you're bound to have some problems too. So they needed healing. <clears throat> Acting like that, living like that for any length of time, you're going to have problems. And uh, they all showed up, a bunch of them mean and snarky and <coughs> fault finding, judgmental, snooty, thinking they so smarty. And you might have just seen them and got mad and go, we don't need this bunch here. But they, they, they waltzed in and the Spirit of God says, man, we need a lot of healing. Man, we need a lot of healing in this place. So the power is here. Oh, hallelujah. Who wants to get healed today? The Spirit of God, just like he hovered over the face of the deep, he was hovering over this place. And over this room and over this house. Hallelujah. And he's saying, come and get it. (laughs) Healing for everyone. Get your healing. It was there. Healing power was there. For the taking, for the receiving. But no one was getting healed. This is a revelation. Can it be that the power of the Lord is present to heal and nobody get healed? It can't. Just like the power of the Lord can be present for people to get saved. Born again and nobody gets saved. He's not going to make people receive Jesus and be born again. He's not going to make people receive healing or anything. Power was there. Verse 18. Behold, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with a palsy. He was had paralysis and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. They could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude. Isn't that, isn't that something? The guys with the best seats were not receivers. And people who were ready to receive couldn't get in the building. And so they went up on the housetop and they they tore up the roof. One translation says they they broke up the clay tiles and they let him down through the tiling. Well, it says tiling right there with his couch into the midst before Jesus. So there's this commotion up top. You hear this cracking and breaking and dust falls into the preacher's hair. And they were already snarky. And so they're lowering this guy down, 
right in front of Jesus. So they interrupt what's going on. And Jesus probably, probably said, thank God. <laughs> Why? Because he had a tough bunch sitting in front of him there. <laughs> and we finally got somebody who has some faith. Who is ready to receive what is so freely given and available here. <laughs> and they let him down through the tiling with his couch into the midst before Jesus. Verse 20. And when Jesus saw their faith. Did you know you can see faith? Yeah. You can see faith of them hauling him, on, him on, up on top of the house. You can see the faith of breaking through and getting him there, whatever it took. You can see he, he wouldn't let them be dragging him around like this and cooperate with all this. They must believe something's going to happen when they get in there. He saw it and he looked at him and said, man, your sins are forgiven you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Did they say we want forgiveness? Why are they there? He's paralyzed. What'd they come for? So did Jesus misunderstand the situation? No. Uh-uh. No. Because, you know, forgiveness and healing are different things. Huh? Right? No. No. Yes? No. When he saw their faith, he said, man, and he said it loud where everybody could hear it, your sins are forgiven you. And man, tension in the room rose. Didn't get better. <clears throat> Verse 21, and the scribes and the Pharisees begin to reason and they said, who is this which speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Hallelujah. Praise God. Who can forgive? Now this is interesting. Because back then they were saying, well, he maybe can heal, but he can't forgive. <laughs> and now they're saying, he can maybe forgive, but he can't heal. <laughs> I want you to know, he both forgives yes. and heals. Yes. He did. Yep. He does. Yes. He will yes. forgive all your iniquities yes. and heal all yes. your diseases. Because yes. you have a healer. Yes. He is the Lord yes. who fixes you. Yes. Glory to God. But man, this... This was what they were looking for. They came looking to find a problem. You know, you, you seek and you'll find. <coughs> if, if you came trying to find fault with me today, you could probably find it. Huh? Might not even need a magnifying glass. Just. But if you were looking for the Lord to bless you, you could find that too. Right? We're not looking for problems. We're looking for answers. We're not looking to judge and nitpick. We're looking to get help and to come up. Right? So they were, they were there ready to take notes. They were there. You know, they don't like him. And the power of the Lord was present to heal him. Mercy of God. Who can forgive sins but God alone? They're scriptorians. When Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, why reason in your hearts? Why, why wrestle about this? He's about to help them. Why rest? What were they wrestling about? Forgiveness. What did the man come for? Healing. What did he get initially? Forgiveness. What is he about to get? Healing. <laughs> He said, uh, why reason in your hearts? Why, why wrestle about this? Whether is easier to say your sins be forgiven you 
are to say, rise up and walk. Amen. The words of the master recorded for us for generations. Which one, notice he didn't say, which one's harder? He didn't say which one's harder. What did he say? Which one's easier? <laughs> Why? Because they're both easy. Ah, are you awake? Are you awake? They're both easy. It's easy to be forgiven. It's easy to be healed. Now you say that and a lot of folk could go, well, no, no, now, you know, it is easy to be forgiven. But man, I've been wrestling on this healing thing for 15 years. There's people who've been wrestling about forgiveness for years too. Hmm? Mm -mm. Jesus said, Whether, which one is easier? You got a problem with me saying he's forgiven. Well, which one's easier? To say your sins be forgiven you? Or to say, get up, walk, be healed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Somebody say, which one's easier? Which one's easier? But he said, in order, verse 24, that you may know that the Son of Man, not, not Son of God, Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he said to the sick of the palsy, I say to you, arise, take up your couch, go into your house. Now according to Jesus, this is just as easy as getting forgiven. In fact, he's saying, in so many words, he's saying, if he doesn't get up, then that's a sign he's not forgiven either. But if he does get up, then you'll know he's forgiven too. Which one's easier? Why would he say which one's easier? Because they are connected to the same source of problem and join to the same solution in redemption. We haven't been taught this like we should. We haven't meditated on, on it like we should. Most Christians believe it's easy to be forgiven. But get healed? Yeah. Not as easy as being forgiven. According to Jesus, it is. If, you're for, if you can be forgiven, you can be healed. Yeah, that's right. If you can be healed, you can be forgiven. Yes, right. He says, which one's easier? The answer is, they're the same. They're the same. Somebody say the same. The same. The same. Do you believe you can be forgiven? Yes. Then you can be healed the same way. Yes. It's provided the same way. It's received the same way. The enemy has made it confusing. The enemy has tried to obscure this, convolute it. It's quiet in here. In Matthew 9, don't turn there, but in Matthew 9, 6, Amplified, Matthew's account of this same happening, he said it like this in the Amplified, Matthew 9, 6. In order that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins and remit the penalty. Forgive sin and remit the penalty. Well, if the sin is forgiven, there should be no penalty for the sin. If the sin is forgiven, there should be no penalty for the sin. If the sin is fixed, no penalty. Sin problem fixed, penalty problem fixed. Right? 
Sin problem fixed. Sickness problem fixed. Lack problem fixed. Oppression, depression problem fixed. Which one's easier? They are the same. Praise God. Praise God. And verse 25, immediately, this is back to Luke 5 now, he rose up before them and took up that whereon he lay and departed to his own house, forgiven and healed, glorifying God. Does sin glorify God? No, forgiveness does. Does sickness glorify God? No, No, healing does. Huh? Does being in bondage glorify God? No, deliverance. Does defeat glorify God? No, victory. Victory glorifies God. All those people will tell you something different, but they're wrong. Don't let them deceive you. Immediately, he got up. He did what? What? Yeah, but he's paralyzed. He's paralyzed. Paralyzed people can't get up. Huh? Sinful, wicked people can't be righteous. Yeah, they can. Yes, they can by faith in Jesus. Paralyzed people can't get up. Yes, they can by faith in Jesus. Which one's easier? You might say, well, I, I think the forgiveness is easier. Then you don't understand the seriousness of sin. What did it take to pay for our sins? What did it take for the spirit of a human being to be born again, recreated, cleansed and washed? That's a greater miracle by far than any repair work on an already existing human body. No, it's wrong. People think, well, you know, well, no, forgiveness is easy. Forgiveness is a big thing. And cleansing and washing is a big thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if you can be forgiven, you can be healed. Same way you received your forgiveness is exactly how you receive your healing. Works the same. You don't cleanse yourself and you don't heal yourself. You just receive. It's not your job to fix you. You can't fix you. Don't need to. You got the Lord who fixes you. Yes. <clears throat> Go with me to Romans, please. Romans, the fifth chapter. You believe in with me, you said? This is this is big. We'll just cover what we need to today. Maybe you can come back. <clears throat> Romans 5 1. It says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9. Verse 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Saved from wrath. It's not his will that any should perish. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom we have now received the atonement. Actually, a better word there may be reconciliation. If you look in your margin, most of your margins will say reconciliation. Atonement is actually an Old Testament word. Our sins are not atoned and covered like they were under the old covenant sacrifices our sins are washed away. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha. Verse 12. 
Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world. Everybody say sin. sin. Now by that one man, he's talking about Adam. Amen. By the first man, by Adam, sin came into the world and death by sin. The wages of sin is death. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, you read about the account in Genesis. On which day did he create pneumonia? Or smallpox? Huh? On which day did God create AIDS? Or cancer? Or heart disease? Which day? Not the first. Not the second. Not the third. Not four fifth C, he rested on the seventh. When did he create it? Sickness, disease, was not deformity, deficiency, was not a part of God's original creation. It entered in because of sin. Right? Man sinned, opened the door to the curse and death. Well, when we're talking about sickness, there would never have been any sickness if there had never been any sin. True or not? There would never have been any poverty, any oppression, depression. There would never have been any sickness if there had never been any sin. It was through sin that death got in. Sickness is incipient death. It is a measure of death working in the body. You get enough sickness in the body, it's dead. Hmm? Poverty is death. Poverty is death working in your material uh, realm. You get, you get enough poverty in a person's life, they'll literally starve to death for lack of something to eat. Death is the same result. If a lot of poverty will kill you, then a little poverty is not good either. Amen. It's the same evil stuff. Yes. Come on, y'all with me. Yeah. God is not using death to teach his children. If God approved of poverty and sickness and these things, then he would also be approving of what let them in. What brought them in? Sin. Like one individual said, sickness, the, all these things, is the foul offspring of its father Satan and its mother sin. It's not the work of God. God gets glory in his works. The devil gets glory in his works. The devil's works are stealing and killing and destroying poverty, disease. It robs, it steals, it kills, it destroys. The Lord gets glory in life. He said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He gets glory in you being forgiven of your sin and cleansed and washed and living instead of dying. He gets glory in your needs being met, in you being blessed, not going under. He gets glory in you being healed and healthy and able to serve Him. What good does it do Him? You can't even get off the bed. What good does it do God? And you, you're robbed of half your life. Die young, die prematurely. That doesn't glorify God. He needs every soldier boots on the ground he can get and he needs you healthy and strong going all day and all night yes don't let the devil lie to you well maybe this disease is a blessing in disguise no it ain't a blessing in disguise or otherwise it's a curse and a curse is a curse and will continue to be a curse. And you and I are not cursed. We're blessed. And if we're forgiven, 
We got a right to be healed. And it's connected to the same thing. And it's based on the same thing. Now in John 9, if you'd look there, we were in Romans 5, go to, or they'll put it on the screen for us. John 9, when you mention sickness and sin, (coughs) excuse me, a lot of times people begin to get uncomfortable. And and a lot of folk will just get outright indignant and angry and, 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 and well are you if I got a problem are you suggesting that I've sinned? Are you suggesting you haven't? <laughs> <laughs> and yet the Bible connects it. In fact I'll just put on the screen, first of all, James 5, 14. Don't go there. They'll put it on the screen for us. James 5, 14. It says, is there any sick among you? Now, this is New Testament scripture. Let him do what? Call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And what? And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And, 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 if he's committed sins, they'll be forgiven him. Why, why connect sin and sickness? Why, why connect them? What Jesus say? Which one's easier? Verse 16, he keeps going. Confess your faults. Now he's talking about sin. He's talking about where you missed it. He's still talking about healing and forgiveness. He didn't just stop with that one statement. Now he goes on. Confess your faults, your mistakes to one another, and pray one for another that you may be healed. healed. Forgiveness and healing. Now having said that, that doesn't mean that if you've got something wrong with you, that it's automatically because you've personally sinned and caused it. That is not true. Although it is true, you can ignore what you know is right and open the door to problems. That's true too. Hmm? I mean, if you know doing something's bad for you and you just keep on doing it, well, you missed it. Are spiritually the same thing is true. We want to walk in a manner that our conscience is clear. Yes. But what if you did blow it? What if you did miss it? And what if you did have a problem physically? You know, we know somebody takes care of both. We know somebody that takes care of both. Forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases, somebody say all, 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 all. If I say, well, it may not be all diseases, well, why can't you say it may not be all iniquities? Ma'am, it's all. Nope. All has to mean the same thing. Now notice in the ninth chapter of John, you see this. Verse one. As Jesus passed by, He saw a man that was blind from his birth. He was born blind. His disciples asked him, said, Master, who sinned? Who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? So they are saying, somebody sinned. That's why we got this this situation and this physical problem. And the reason they would think that way is because through the Old Testament, you see that um, disease and poverty and all these things is a curse. Yeah. That's right. They knew it's a curse. And you don't get a curse for obeying God. Amen. But Jesus said what? Neither one. Neither one. Whose sin caused this baby to be born blind. Well, it wasn't him. He wasn't born yet. How'd he sin? Wasn't him. Well, it must have been his parents. 
Jesus said, no, it wasn't. It was neither one. You mean you can have a problem and nobody sinned? Yeah, I'll tell you whose fault it is. Adam's. He sinned. And it opened the door to the curse in the earth. He said, neither this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Don't stop there. Verse 4, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. They had not seen the works of God until they saw the healing. Who, they want to fix the blame. Jesus wants to fix the problem. But no. I, you hear I got a little quiet. Because we're talking about sin and sickness. And oh man, people, people get in arms about this. Just the mere suggestion. It's a good thing to understand this. That's why the devil wants to keep you away from it. No, it's not necessarily, well, let me back up. Through one man's sin, death entered in. Yes. Amen. Right? That's right? Why is disease in the earth? Because it goes back to the garden. I mean, animals get diseases. When did they sin? Huh? Plants get diseases. When did they sin? And by like token, you could encounter something in your life that you didn't sin and cause it to come. What if you weren't even a believer? How would, how would it be going with you? The devil will try to, you know, the enemy's always trying to minister condemnation. Isn't he? Such a liar. Such a deceiver. Always try, well, something's wrong with you. You don't have enough faith. You've missed it in so many ways. Well, you and everybody else around you. But why would you stop there? If you had missed it, if you knew you had missed it. I mean, on one occasion, Jesus told the woman, uh, uh, the man rather, he said, uh, you, you've been made whole, go and sin no more. Lest the worst thing come on you. Right? So you can, you can do things that's wrong and open the door and have problems. But if you did, you know it. I said, if you did, you know it. And if you don't know it, you don't hunt, hunt, hunt. Maybe I missed it somewhere. Maybe I missed it somewhere. And maybe you didn't. Maybe you didn't miss it. Maybe the curse is in the earth. Hmm? Yeah, but I've had such a hard time. What if you were an unbeliever? Where would you be? A lot of you, instead of having tough fights, you'd be gone. Years ago, there's something worse than a tough fight. That's just getting destroyed. Boom. Don't know anything. Don't know how to believe God. Don't know how to fight the good fight of faith. Hmm? It's not like unbelievers who are not trying to believe God have such rosy, wonderful lives. They're getting hit. They're getting attacked. Same stuff and worse. Why? Just being a human being on the planet, you can encounter difficulties, imperfections in your body, imperfections in the atmosphere imperfections hmm? it's because of the curse which is because of sin oh but we have a forgiver and we have a healer so no matter how it got that way no matter where it just was in here because of sin and the curse or I did something stupid and opened the door and caused myself a problem Either way, which one's easier? I can get forgiven and I can get healed and I don't have to wait till next week. 
I don't have to wait till tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Go with me to Isaiah 53. Anybody got anything marked over there? Isaiah 53. (coughs) Isaiah 53. Verse 1, I'm reading out of Young's literal translation. Somebody's getting free. Somebody's getting free. Quit trying to find fault. Quit trying to pin blame. Hmm? Quit looking for stuff that's not there. Quit, Quit yielding to condemnation. If there's something you need to see... The Lord will show you. If you don't see it, be happy. Right? Well, maybe you and maybe you can't live by maybe. That's the enemy trying to mess with you. I could have. I should have. Oh, that's a bunch of junk. It's a bunch of phony humility. And all it'll do is condemn you and undermine your confidence. And that's what the enemy is after. Is to keep you in a place of no confidence or no faith. You must, how do you receive your forgiveness? By faith. How do you receive your healing? Same way. By faith. And that is in confidence. You can't be going around going, I I hope I'm saved. I, I, I don't know that I really deserve it. Let me help you with that. You don't. So get over that. You just, you just receive it. It's a gift. But well, I hadn't, hadn't lived very well. I don't know if, I, if, if I'm worthy of being healed. You're not. Just get over it and go head on and receive it by the mercy of God anyway. If I can be forgiven, I can be healed. Same provision. It, did Jesus take care of the sin problem? Did he? Did he? Did he? If there had never been a sin problem, there would never have been a sickness problem. Well, in taking care of the sin problem, he also took care of the sickness problem and the poverty problem. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's for us to receive our healing just like, somebody say just like, just like, just like I receive my forgiveness. Isaiah 53, 1. Who has given credence to that which we heard and the arm of Jehovah on whom has it been revealed? He comes up as a tender plant before him as a root out of a dry land. He's no form nor honor when we observe him nor appearance when we desire him. He's despised and left of men a man of pains and acquainted with sickness. And as one hiding the face from us, he is despised and we esteemed him not. Surely, oh somebody say surely. Surely Surely our sicknesses he has borne and our pains he has carried them. And we, we have esteemed him plagued, smitten of God and afflicted. And he is pierced for our transgressions bruised for our iniquities. Now stop, stop, stop. How many believe he bore your iniquities? Huh? He was punished for your transgressions. The previous verse says he bore your sicknesses and carried your pains. Is that true or not? Do we, do we take a cleaver and, and divide these in two and say, yeah, this is for us, but no, this is not. This is for everybody. This may not be for everybody. You dare not do it. He bore my sicknesses. He carried my pains. He took my uh, iniquities. He bore my transgressions. Surely our sicknesses he bore. Our pains he carried. Verse 5. 
He's pierced for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is on him. That's all your mental and emotional yeah. health. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. yeah. Jesus never had any mental problems of his own. That's right. But he took ours. Yeah. I said he, just like he bore our sins, he bore our sicknesses. Just like he bore our sicknesses, he bore mental anguish. That's right. The chastisement and broken peace was on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And by his bruise, there is healing to us. Did he have to have the thorns jammed on his head to go to the cross? No, he didn't. Did he have to be scourged at the whipping post in order to go to the cross? Well, then was that just extra unnecessary? No. He was taking care of everything. He was, he, oh, hallelujah. He offered up himself, spirit and soul and mind and body. He redeemed us, spirit and soul and mind and body. Yes, he paid the price for our sins. He also paid for our healing. He also paid for our peace and our needs to be met. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Now, here's, here's a big one. If it all happened in the same Jesus, in the same work of redemption, and it's received the same way, so much so that Jesus said, which one's easier? Get forgiven, get healed. To him, it's the same. And he knows. I said, we ought to, we ought to stay with him. If he said it's the same, what do we say? It's the same. How do you know you're forgiven? Hmm? How do you know you're forgiven? Is anybody in here convinced you are forgiven? How do you know? Hmm? You always feel forgiven? <coughs> Have you always acted righteous? How do you know you are then? Are you sure you're forgiven? Maybe you're not. Check how you feel. That'd be a mistake. Right? <coughs> Check, see if you feel forgiven. Do you really feel completely clean? Do you really feel like the righteousness of God? Do you really feel? Then how you know you're forgiven? How you know? How do you know? You believe that you have received your forgiveness. Oh, hallelujah. You believed you receive it. The more you believe it and the less you quit focusing on how you feel, the more confidence you have and the freer you live. Guess what? Guess what? That's exactly how you receive your healing. How do you know you're healed? It's not based on what you feel any more than your forgiveness is based. It's not based on a report. It's not based on a test any more than your forgiveness is based on a test. Which is easier. It's not your job to fix yourself. You, sh you don't have to have any condemnation or shame or feeling put out or feeling less because all your money is not here or you still got some symptoms or you still got a symptom of unrighteousness. Right. Not your job. Not your job. Your job is to believe you receive. I, I receive my forgiveness. That's all I got to do. I receive my forgiveness. And I am forgiven. Don't let your eyes fool you. I'm forgiven and cleansed. No matter what you may see or not see, I am forgiven. And what else? Come on, what else? What else? I'm healed. No matter what you see, no matter what I feel, I believe that I receive 
my healing. It's based on the same Jesus, the same work, the same redemption. Hallelujah. Woo. Stand on your feet and praise God. <coughs> lift your hands. Oh, lift your hands. Give God praise. Give God thanks. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we give you glory. <coughs> Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Altar workers, would you come up to the front? <coughs> Just close your eyes. We don't know who's in the house. We don't know who's watching by internet. We don't know who's in the house in Sarasota. We do know him who forgives all our iniquities and heals and, and, and heals all our diseases. I don't have to save myself. I can't. I don't have to heal myself. I can't. I have a savior. I have a healer. So everybody, say, affirm it or reaffirm it. Because there are those that will be saying it for the first time. Say it out loud. Loud enough somebody standing beside you could hear it. Say it out loud. Father God. I believe in you. I believe Jesus. Paid the price. For all my sins. All my mistakes. He took it on himself. He also paid the price. For my healing. And my deliverance. And, my deliverance. and, by, faith, and by faith, I do receive, I do receive this, forgiveness. this forgiveness. I do receive, I do receive this, Jesus this Jesus as my Savior, as my Savior and, as my healer, and as my healer. I receive my forgiveness. I receive my, I receive my cleansing. I receive. My Righteousness. Thank you, Lord. And I receive healing. I receive restoration. I receive strength and soundness. By his stripes, I am healed. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and begin to praise the Lord. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Praise you. Hallelujah. Let's sing uh, Victory is Mine.